Recently, the Honorable Kerala High Court has delivered a significant judgment in the context of constitutional validity of Section 16.2c of the CGST Act. The judgment has been delivered in the case of Naha Shukur Vasir's Assistant Commissioner. In this case, the petitioner challenged the constitutional validity of Section 16.2c and Rule 36.4. The petitioner contended before the court that Section 16.2c is violative of Article 14 as it is discriminatory against the buyer. The Honorable Court held that it is now well settled that any tax legislation may not be easily interfered with. The court must show judicial restraint to interfere with tax legislation unless it is shown and proved that such taxing statute is manifestly unjust or glaringly unconstitutional. The court found that nothing contained in Section 16.2c is violative of Article 14 as it does not indicate that it is discriminatory against the purchasing dealers. It is settled that legislation or provision in a statute can be, cannot be challenged only on the grounds of arbitrariness or unreasonableness. Manifest arbitrariness must be established to strike down a provision in the statute as violative of Article 14 of the Constitution. The test to determine manifest arbitrariness is whether the enactment is drastically unreasonable, capricious, irrational or without adequate determining principle. Nothing indicates that the improved provisions satisfy the said test and thus manifestly arbitrary and glaringly unconstitutional. Under these circumstances, the challenge to the constitutional validity of the impugned provisions must fail. This is yet another significant judgment regarding constitutional validity of Section 16.2c after Patna High Court judgment in the case of Astha Enterprises. Even though in D.Y. Bethel case, the Honorable Madras High Court held that the department must first take action against the defaulting supplier who has not paid the due tax to the government even after collecting the tax from the recipient. It seems that whether Section 16.2c is arbitrary and constitutionally valid or not is well settled in view of Patna High Court judgment and this particular judgment. Though legally, the question remains whether the department must take direct action against the buyer asking him to reverse the ITC rather than taking action against the defaulting supplier. Whatever it is, but now we know that it has become a formal law as Section 41.2 has been amended with effect from 1st October 2022 and Rule 37A has been inserted with effect from 26 December 2022, providing the manner of reversal of ITC in cases where supplier has not made the payment of taxes to the government. So it can be said that now the courts are highly unlikely to interfere in such issues anymore. Probably, amendment of law and insertion of Rule 37A has given legislative support to the government to demand reversal of ITC from the buyer. Having said that, since Rule 37A and Parent Section, uh, Parent Section 41.2 is amended prospectively and not retrospectively, one can argue that department cannot demand reversal of ITC in such cases from the buyer in the earlier tax periods. Moreover, what needs to be looked into is whether there is a mechanism for the buyer to check and determine whether his supplier has discharged his tax liability through GSTR 3B. 2A only mentions whether or not 3B has been filed which cannot be a conclusive proof of supplier having paid taxes as there can be cases where tax liability has been discharged through DRC 03 or maybe 3 has been filed, 3B has been filed nil or with low tax liability. Though the improvements in system have enabled auto-generation of notices asking the taxpayer to explain the difference, if any, in liability reported in GSTR 1 and 3B. So this was the latest update regarding GST. Stay tuned to the channel for more such updates and subscribe to the channel if not done yet. Thank you.